Hey guys, welcome back to Rock Up Racing. I'm here with Thomas. I'm here with Charlie. And uh, we're now just coming back from Donington Park. Yep. What can we say? What can we say? I'm going to not, I'm not going to swear so much on the channel anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, Tom's mum yeah. got very upset about him swearing, yeah. so. Today was <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is that you're going to want to uh, stick around for this video, because it's probably going to be one of the most action-packed and controversial videos yet. And, uh, yeah, we're driving back. You can see by our faces. Um, yeah. Enjoy the video. This time on Rock Up Racing, the team is revving up for an electrifying start to the 2024 season. But this isn't just any race. It marks the debut race for their 1968 Porsche 911 Gertie. She's a gem that's just rolled out of the workshop of engine maestro Richard Chamberlain. After pushing Gertie to its limits during a full test day at Snetterton, the team uncovered a few issues that needed ironing out. In the weeks leading up to the race, Tom at Coastal Motorsport has been working tirelessly on Gertie, ensuring that every component is tuned to perfection for the big day. So the more eagle-eyed view has obviously noticed that the doors are odd. Um, if you can see over there, they're the original doors that came with the car each. The RSR doors fit straight on the car and they're eight kilos each because they're fiberglass. So Swap those over. The chat that you saw had the old RSR livery on it. We've taken the wrap off it. That's going to get wrapped today to match the car. Um, it had those really terrible like mirrors that were molded into the fiberglass. Now it has no mirrors at all. Now it has no mirrors at all. So we cut. I cut these out, and this has got some tubing both sides just to feed some ventilation into the car because Rob was getting quite hot. It's because he is hot. It's because he's really hot. Um, so that's that. That's that done. We've got external mirrors which I've got in there which need fitting after the wraps done and they're just two holes, they bolt straight in. Um, so that's good, we have obviously the brake issue. Uh, we ordered some calipers for the car, but they were wrong. Uh, it turns out that the ones we actually needed were about triple the price of the ones we'd ordered. Uh, so we sent them back and we bought some rebuild kits. So I've re rebuilt the original calipers that were on the car, all four corners. It's also got now drilled discs on it, which will hopefully aid with the cooling of the car. Uh, we're now going to put some new brake pads in it as well for Monday. Uh, to aid with the cooling on the front as well, uh, can we lift the car up or can you just look underneath it? No, just lift the car up. The car. I'll, just, I'll just cut the, I'll cut the video. Just now video the whole thing, right? Cool. This is how we get 10 minute content. It's pretty slow, isn't it? It's really slow. I wish it was faster. Can you speed it up in the edit so it looks like it is yeah, really Yeah, speed it up. So, I've run tubing under here. It's, it's fairly, it's not like F1 standard kind of stuff here. We've just got cable ties. Why not? But the problem is, if these get caught on the track, you don't want them ripping anything off. So, if, if they're happy to rip each other off, that sounds a bit dodgy, actually. Let's just start again. No, we're not kidding. starting the game. Carry on. Okay. If these get torn off, it doesn't matter because this is like really cheap tubing. So, this runs underneath the car. Um, and into the back of the discs, you can see in there, which will cool the discs down when we're in a racing scenario. In the back, we've got a anti-roll bar. Now, for some reason, American cars, this one and the RSR, both came to the UK with no rear anti-roll bar. Whether that's like an American thing, I don't know whether they just don't like anti-roll bars, I'm not sure, but, um, so this was- They like it to roll. They like it to roll around. We don't, we like it stiff. Mm -hmm. So we got this from Design 11. It's a fairly generic 
rear anti-roll bar. Very nice um, and shiny. The drop links are adjustable. Um, and yeah, hopefully it will kind of keep the rear feeling a bit more connected than it did at Snet. Um, the Motec, we got a second map from our tuner, uh, which has raised the rev limiter from 77 to 8,000. Awesome. Um, not completely sure how much power that will make now, but hopefully a little bit more. 1,000. 1,000, yeah. Um, so that's cool. So that's now, now got an 8,000 RPM rev limiter on it. The brake pads, new brake pads need to go in. Still got the old brake pads in it, just because I needed to bleed the system. When you take all the calipers off and rebuild them, you essentially get rid of a huge amount of the brake fluid in the system because there's a lot of brake fluid kept in the calipers. So, yeah, the calipers are rebuilt with new seals and then you need to pump a, a load of brake fluid through it anyway. We wanted to refresh it, um, but yeah. So the system's not now essentially all bled, but it needs to be then backed off again with the new pads put back in. Special mention, the 944's back. And it's still it's still broken. Yeah, it's still broken. <laughs> Look at the doors! Tom's now putting all the window back in and the mechanism, door mechanism. Will, at North Horsham Signs, has knocked it out of the park. That looks incredible. Oh, perfect. With Gertie all prepped and primed for the race at Donington Park on Easter Monday, the Rock Up Racing team loads up, their spirits high with anticipation. They hit the road for what promises to be a weekend they most definitely won't forget in a hurry. The Calm All Porsche Trophy is where the action unfolds this weekend. The UK's premier all Porsche race series that welcomes any Porsche to the grid. Unique for its competitive edge and charitable heart, all profits aid the Calm charity. With a lineup of 32 cars, predominantly Boxsters and Caymans, the grid is ripe for a new challenge. We made it, thankfully. We're here at Donington, and it is chilly. Really hoping it's gonna be warmer tomorrow. But hey ho. The, uh, the garages are all, um, they're all still full at the moment, so uh, the garage that we're in is, the garage we're in tomorrow has got cars in, so we can't get in there yet, because as you can hear, there's cars going around the circuit at the moment, so. But uh, we're now gonna go and see if the bar is open and see if we can get a drink. And then hopefully by which time, we can unload the van and the car. Do you reckon you can fit in there, Tom? Just yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you just get in there, mate. It's got an engine. Just get in the start up. Should we race this tomorrow? They realised that we're from uh, Rock Up Racing and they've just invited us into here, the pit lane suite, for their hospitality. Do I need to sit down for your presentation? Yep, no worries. Fine. You put away and it goes. So the Hilton Hotel have obviously thought about this really well. You've got the bar over there. You've got all the seating here. You've got a built in play area. <laughs> Wahoo! So, here's the menu. I need to make sure that I order something that um, has the least amount of CO2 impact on our environment. Oh, Papa! Nah, so let's just go for the max. Oh, the reason why we can't call the dog Papa is the dog It's not enough. Oh, here we go. This is the. This is where it is. Look, 8.1 kilos. Ribeye is. I thought I'd better just film some of this before I eat it all. I've got chicken wings, and they're fairly mediocre. 
I'd give them a. Um, and he told me how much they made. Didn't remember 5 out of 10. Week. 5 out of 10. Yeah. They're supposed to be tangy, but they're not. But so it's it's alright. So I had a lovely chicken burger that was here, and uh, had some chips that was here, but. They were gone. It was a solid um, 6 out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Tom? My curry was pretty solid. I'd say it's if if a six, six point eight. Well, okay. Uh, that was probably I don't know, seven point four. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm full. I've had a, I've had a, a beer, a coke, and I'm I'm ready for bed. Okay. Good night, Tom. Good night. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs>
despite the challenging weather. So, <laughs> that's the queue for Scrutineer and it is, yeah, mental. There is a lot of cars, a lot, a lot of cars. <clears throat> I'm not actually sure how many cars are out with Robert today. I'll have to ask him. But just going by this, it's rather a lot. There's a plane up there somewhere. Not you'll ever see it. <clears throat> but yeah, it should be. It'll probably be an action-packed race, I'm sure. So it's still raining a little bit. But we have a look at this. Uh, qualifying, is it 11? Race at just before three o'clock. Look at that, it's supposed to get nicer. Can't imagine it at the moment. scrutineering, attention turns to qualifying preparations. This final check involves securing bonnet pins and torquing the wheels. Simple yet crucial steps to ensure the car's readiness for the track. first lap of qualifying, with the track drenched from relentless rain, Robert carefully eases the car around, using this initial lap to gauge the track's condition. It's a strategic move, allowing him to assess the grip levels and identify any particularly treacherous spots before pushing the car to its limits.
session, Rob encounters traffic on the circuit. While navigating through competitors is part and parcel of racing, the inclement weather adds a layer of unpredictability. As Robert aims to clock a competitive qualifying time, dealing with the added challenge of visibility and varying speeds in these wet conditions, tests his skill and patience on the track. So, uh, just done a 134. So he's third. Oh no. Just changing now. Fourth now. But that's really good going, really good going. And we've got seven, seven and a half minutes left. So, good so far. As the session winds down, Robert pushes through the challenging conditions, delivering a strong lap with a time of 1 minute 33 seconds. This impressive performance secures him sixth position on the grid, with three Boxsters and two Caymans ahead. For a car that's nearly 60 years old, competing against much newer machinery, it's an incredible session that showcases both the car's enduring capabilities and Robert's skillful driving. I think he's going to be so happy with that. That was really good, really good session. Considering the weather, and it's actually raining more now. Even though the weather said it was supposed to clear up, but the forecast said it was supposed to clear up, but it, it didn't. So, how's that, mate? Really good. Well done. That was really good. Good session. Yeah. Wipers died. Wipers died. Couldn't see anything behind Diver. <laughs> Oh. It lowers the steams up. Oh. Have a look at the ceiling in there. The ceiling? Yeah. Ah! Ah! Look at the ceiling in the car. Get. Well, you can't really tell. You want it to roll a bit in the wet, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Well, well done, mate. Good. Oh, it's amazing. A random guy came and stopped me before the thing and was like, that sounds amazing. Hey, wow. <laughs> With the qualifying session behind them and the car performing exceptionally well, the team's focus shifts to the race.
The only preparations now are to bleed the brakes and conduct a general checkover, ensuring everything is in optimal condition. Meanwhile, there's a cautious optimism in the air as the team keeps one eye on the sky. The forecast suggests it's supposed to dry up, a potential game changer that could play to their advantage, given the car's strong showing in less than ideal conditions. I'm going up in the world. Yeah. So we're just doing some brake bleeding. Just make sure everything's all good. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Fine session. It was very exciting. Yes. Excellent. Brilliant. I hope you're cheering very loud. So loud. Good. Hello, Mother. Please bestow upon me oh. your <laughs> finest um, grilled meats. Thank you. Three bits. Sorry guys, you're not ready for this yet. So Tom, what sort of changes have you made or anything you've done in between lunch and the post? We've worked out about the fuel. So we were only three kilos over the minimum limit, so that was a little bit cuspy after quality, so we've had to add a little bit more fuel. Um, but yeah, uh, tire pressures were pretty much bang on. It was a good guess. They started all right, they're fine. Um, brakes they were fine obviously I've rebuilt all the calipers so it was worth after quality uh, just uh, just checking over them bleeding them all again making sure they're okay um, yeah they were fine didn't get much air on them at all to be fair which is good uh, the anti-roll bars as I say before quality were softened right off they seem to have done the trick the car feels good according to Rob he's happy with it all the door seals out to get the RSR doors to fit on it and uh, and that sort of messed up the uh, waterproofness of it so <laughs> a bit of a shame but uh, yeah we've, we've, we've dried it out and hopefully it won't it seems to be drying out I've looked at the map and there's no more rain coming so fingers crossed having a couple more cars go around we should dry the track out a bit and hopefully we why why are you so close I'm hopefully not it, I'm not hopefully it'll be dry enough and it, the car won't get too wet so yeah. the transponder issue we had um, turns out the earth was just broken so I am um, yeah rewired the earth uh, and uh, it seems to be working again, which is good. Brilliant. Um, yeah, pretty sure that's about it. Happy Thanks. with the car. We'll see what happens. We seem to be pretty quick, so. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Cheers, mate. The car is ready. The sky is clear. It's time to race. But what happens next is beyond anyone's expectations. Look at this. Beautiful weather just in time. Sun's out. Yeah. Love it. It's actually quite warm now. Oh. Didn't tire pressures, Tom? Yeah. Off he goes.
On the first corner into the race, Rob encounters a patch of wet, slippery track, sending his 911 into a dreaded spin and straight into the gravel trap at Redgate, a moment every driver fears. Seeing other drivers heading straight for you as you spin is a nightmare scenario. Now stuck in the gravel, Rob tries to restart the car, but it's firmly lodged. The marshals, already at the car, attempt to push it out to no avail. They signal for the telehandler, a beacon of hope in a dire situation. It's Rob's last chance to be pulled out of the gravel and make a comeback in the race. <clears throat> I sort of think, what happened there? I think he just got on a wet line. Did he? Yeah, yeah, wet line. <sighs> I think he got pushed a bit wider then. The telehandler springs into action, successfully pulling the car out of the gravel and back onto the track. Now a lap down, Robert faces an uphill battle. With determination, he sets off, ready to claw back from this setback. Unbeknownst to him and the team, however, there's more trouble looming on the horizon. With Robert catching up, the drivers wait for the safety car's retreat. As the race restarts, they're unaware of the imminent twists to follow. It happens, don't they? So, yeah. It'd be good practice for Rob to um, cut through the pack, get some overtaking in, get the car, uh, get some sort of time under the belt with the car. He's barely driven it, so it's just, you know. To be fair, probably it'll work out probably quite well. Yeah, that it's a good experience for him to get through some traffic. Yeah, learn the car a bit more. Like we were never expecting to win today. No, no, so no, no. It's just more. <clears throat> you know, he's barely driven it, so he was literally saying earlier, he just wants to get some more seat time in it. So exactly, yeah. Maybe now he can do it without any pressure. Exactly, that's a really good way of thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Mad though, didn't expect that yeah. at all. I know. But yeah, there the we go. Start as well. That's that's racing. The lights flick to green, and the race roars back to life. But for how long? This race features a mandatory pit stop with the window opening 25 minutes in. Yet a boxer makes an early, unscheduled visit to the pits, a harbinger of the unpredictable drama yet to unfold on the track. Just a few laps into regaining his rhythm, Robert spots trouble ahead. The boxer that had pitted early is stranded at the side of the track, conspicuously missing a wheel. This unexpected sight triggers another safety car deployment, adding another layer of challenge to the already intense race. handler is summoned once more, this time to remove the three-wheeled boxster from the track. As the racers line up, awaiting the green light signal to resume, the tension is palpable. 
The day's events have already taken unexpected turns, but as the race continues, it's clear that the surprises are far from over. As the green light signals the race's continuation, the pit window swings open and a flurry of activity ensues. Yeah, he's still staying out by the looks of this. I reckon what he'll try and do is come in really, really late to make up a load of spaces. He's getting, he, you know, I think that's what he said he'd do. If he, if he lost a few spaces, he was going to come in as late as he could. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the pit lane, the Rock Up Racing team stands ready, poised for action for whenever Rob decides to make his stop. But unbeknownst to the team, back on the track, Robert has encountered a problem of his own. With a slightly late gear change and the track still greasy, Gertie launches into another spin. This time, Rob manages to keep it from veering off the track and swiftly recovers, rejoining the race without losing much ground. With the pit window still open, the Rock Up Racing Team's eyes remain glued to the pit entry, anticipating Rob's crucial stop. Every second counts as they prepare to spring into action. He's in. He's in. He's in. Hey bro. Yeah, no That's right. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, it's all good, mate. Yeah. At least you get some seat time. It's you all good. It's the really busy bit as well. Yeah. It got, it got really busy. Some people couldn't even get out. The car's just getting some good get times. The, I can't get the car down the While Robert is in the midst of his mandatory pit stop, another drama unfolds on the track. A car crashes, coming to a halt at the side of the track. Oblivious to this development, the Rock Up Racing team focuses on executing a flawless pit stop, unaware of the chain of events about to unfold. Just as Robert exits the pits, he catches sight of the safety car lights flashing on, accompanied by the wave of yellow flags. Once more, the race is brought to a halt, signaling another pause in the action as the track responds to the recent incident. Safety car. He's only just gone out. Huh? What's happened now? So it looks like there's a, that For the third four? time in this race, the telehandler is called into action. From the pits, the Rock Up Racing team watches the live stream, eyes fixed on the unfolding scene. What they witness next perfectly encapsulates the unpredictable and tumultuous nature of this race. As they watch, the telehandler, tasked with clearing the track, has itself become a spectacle. Its tires spin, churning mud as it becomes stuck, digging itself deeper with every attempt to move. So, this is what this is what the safety car is. The telehandler that's supposed to be recovering this car is now stuck in the mud. You can't believe this. The, what a joke! What a shame! Oh dear. Well, there we go. After a tense few moments, 
the telehandler manages to free itself from the mud's grasp and attaches to the front of the stranded car. It begins to pull the vehicle free, but in a bewildering turn of events, it heads back the way it came and finds itself stuck in the mud once again. This time, the situation seems more dire. The telehandler's luck in escaping its muddy trap appears to have run out, adding yet another twist to an already extraordinary race day. For the next 18 minutes, the race remained under the control of the safety car, leading up to a conclusion that left everyone in suspense. Rather than a burst across the finish line, the race ended under the steady pace of the safety car. The decision not to red flag the race remains a puzzling topic, perhaps a question for another day. In this unusual turn of events, Robert finishes in 24th place. It's a race that the Rock Up Racing team are all too relieved to put behind them. A test of endurance and patience that they'll remember for a long time to come. So the race is ended under bloody safety car. Look at this. What a... Oh, no. Crazy. What an absolute crazy race, if you could call it that. I don't know how many minutes of great actual racing there was, but that's uh, not, not what we expected. Not the race anyone expected, but the team sees the bright side. The car performed excellently, with all modifications proving successful. Now they look forward to Silverstone, ready to take on Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws, armed with newfound resilience and determination.